Hold up. Let's get this shit. Okay. Today I want to take a look at attacking entry stats. We're going to look at stage three of the NAL 2021 season. I have it in dark mode because I guess the only adverse effect is that the team colors are inverted. Uh, not that big of a deal. Normally on sheets when I have a bunch of green and red representing wins and losses, I don't invert it because it makes it look weird. But I'm sure you guys can uh, manage with the inverted colors given that it might save your eyes from being burned out by light mode. And, okay, why attacker entry stats? Because, the answer is because, a lot of times people will talk about entry stats, and so they'll look at, I mean, whatever place they get their stats from, but probably CGG, and they'll just look at a player's entry stat line. But that also takes into account defense, and attack and defense are wildly different when it comes to entry. Like, you, you don't have an entry player on defense. Like, very, very rarely... At top tier play, is anyone getting that aggressive where they're like looking for a fight on defense? Uh, you're trying to waste time, and that's one of your primary win conditions as a defender. So attackers, they need to get in, and they need to take confrontations with the defenders. So they have, you know, always, like literally always, there's somebody playing entry on attack, and then a lot of times secondary entry, and maybe the roles are slightly different, but you always have somebody going in and taking the first engagements, and that is generally entry player. And then uh, some number of players supporting them with drones or backing them up. Okay. So the stats for this kind of thing gets muddled by having defense. The closest thing to an entry player on defense, I guess, is roamers, which are intended to take the confrontations with the attackers. But you're still not playing entry, right? It's just you are getting opening kills and opening deaths. It's not entry per se. So I want to take a look at specifically at entry. So I took just the attacking stats okay so i have of course they are ordered by the placement that the team got in the stage so ssg first auction third sonics third so on and so forth down the line and then play day one two three four five all the way up to nine there are two play day nines here because dark zero played two games on the day so it was just easier to add this in rather than combine it into these cells that just look weird and this is just the easier way to do it. and then i have the totals for the teams and then also the players the differential which is just the kills minus the deaths and then involvement, uh, this is just the range for the team. So this, it, for the players, is just the percent of opening duels that players were involved in. So Bosco here was involved in 15.9% of space stations entry duels on attack. And entry duel means that somebody had to die. So there can be an opening engagement. If nobody dies, it doesn't actually count as the opening duel, entry duel, whatever. It has to involve somebody dying. There were a few rounds throughout the stage where there was a team kill for the first kill, so not counting any entry for that. Uh, there, there would it, it'd be weird. There'd be like a corresponding death, and then what? You give the like opening kill to the person who team killed. No, it'd just be weird. And then also keep in mind this might not be one hundred percent accurate. I kind of take the stats down manually, and then I transfer them and into the sheet and whatnot. So I this has this is going to be very very close to correct, but it's possible I have maybe a couple errors. So just. Keep that in mind. If you notice anything super weird, that could be why. So I guess let's just talk about it. We'll start with uh, Space Station because they're at the top here. And then specifically Hot and Cold, of course, was the king of entry this stage. Went 13-1 and one on attack, uh, giving him plus 12. As you can see, way better than anyone else on Space Station. And it makes sense. They were one of the better entry teams, and he was their not primary entry, I guess, because I heard him talking. Uh, it might have been a post, or I don't, I don't remember where it was. He was talking about how he's not the entry player per se, but he just sort of plays solo and looks for openings. So I guess, I don't know, the person looking for openings, opening duels uh, is like the entry player. But uh, it, it's, it's a little bit weird. But because he has uh, far more than anyone else, I mean, he has 14 here and then 11, 10. Yeah, so I'm just going to count him as the, the primary entry, even if maybe that's not the way they define it strictly. So, yeah, involved in almost a third of the opening duels for Space Station. That's generally what you want. If you designate a player as your entry player, like playing the role, again, maybe hot and cold notwithstanding, but just generally speaking, if you assign a player to that role, you want them to be involved in a bunch of opening, in most of the opening duels. Maybe not most, because uh, it's, it's difficult for that player to be in like all of them. I mean, the highest involvement we have is, I think, uh, DP Fire here, and he's still only below 44%. So it, it'd be incredible if, if one player was literally taking over half of the opening duels. But you do want the one player doing that sort of thing because they are intended to do it. They practice doing it. They are being droned. 
etc and of course you want them to win as well but for them to win a bunch of duels they first have to be involved in a bunch of opening duels so right what is very very interesting here one of the things of course is that attackers win way more opening duels than defenders maybe people aren't aware of that because there's always a balance to stats they they cancel out when you look on cgg because they're tracking attackers and defenders by just looking at attackers you can see how many more attackers won and i think i have it right here so attackers went plus 68 on entry uh so 226 to 158 so i guess defenders won 158 entry duels and attackers won 256 so that's uh you know that's not uh that's not nothing that's a very wide margin but it makes sense right because attackers again are specifically trying to go in they're looking to get that kill they have the drones to support them they have offensive gadgets to help them do it um you know stuns frags uh, zofia stun launcher like stuff like this to i mean clear and then you can also have, you have explosives uh, frags help you get kills but they can also blow up shields or banshees or whatever is deterring you and then maybe maybe this isn't strictly true but i you know they sort of have the better weapons at least the higher damage weapons more consistent because defenders on average have a higher uh rate of fire so if you're getting a hit getting headshots it's better but if you're not hitting ahead, then higher damage is just very good. It makes your mag last longer if you have a lower rate of fire and uh, just just a bunch of factors. But um, generally, ex ex I don't know, except for the very good defender guns, probably on average, attacker guns are better, right? Like the Roni is really good and stuff, but attackers just have really powerful weapons. Uh, maybe I didn't explain that so well, but I think uh, that's I think attackers do on average have better weapons. Just let's just go with it. OK, so. What else to look at? Um, looking, going down the line, I, I actually have written down at the bottom a bunch of interesting things, so maybe I won't uh, point them out up here, the thing. But th there are some pretty impressive stat lines here. Like, there are some 6-0s, like Sonics went 6-0 on their attacking half in their first game, and we have one from Oxygen here, we have one from Space Station. There are very... F I don't think there's any 0-6s, uh, because attack is generally pretty good. There are some like oh and some like zero 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 or uh, no, that's not even for the whole map. But I guess uh, there's some right like oh and hmm. I swear there's some. So oh yeah, here's an here's an oh and three. So that's that's pretty bad. But like I don't I don't that might be the worst one that involves a zero in it. Like I think there might there's a one and four which is you know minus three as well. So pretty bad. But Okay, I'm just going to leave this here for just a second, so feel free to pause if you want to look at any of these stats. And again, I have the map they played on, and I don't. it doesn't say which team that they played against. You can kind of figure it out if they played the same map, um, but the, like these two teams didn't play. It was Space Station against, um, I think, Mirage on the first day, and TSM versus Auction on the first day, so... Keep that in mind. Uh, it might not be 100% clear who played whom, but if you want to look back, you can just look who played whom on which on which play day. It was just a little bit too much information for the format I have going here. So I'll leave it here, and then I'm going to scroll down now if you want to pause it on, on this screen, if you want to like look at any individual player stats. Maybe the stat is somewhere, but I, like, I don't think there's any play page you can go on CGG that just has the attacker stats. So, I mean, if you're, if you're curious, this is here. Some stats, like 1 in 6, that might not seem like it makes sense but this be is because it involves an overtime round uh a team could play up to eight attacking rounds on a map if they go to 15 rounds and they get double attack on overtime keep that in mind and if a team plays fewer than six rounds it can be because they like they don't uh, like they start on defense and they play six rounds and the game ends before they play six rounds in the second half so i mean they win or they lose whatever but the game ends before they actually get to that number and that can skew some of the results a little bit if you're trying to uh you know an analyze this sort of stuff which i'm not going to do too much in this i'm just going to sort of present it mostly and then point out a few interesting things but if you're trying to analyze it you might take into a fat into account the fact that some teams didn't get to play all their attack rounds and some teams did and this and that and things like that okay so so we'll move on to just the interesting stuff and before i read off uh, all of this stuff let's just look at these here and i know i have the assorted in a weird way i had it on the side um over here at first but i wanted to zoom in further so it's a little bit easier to see so i moved them down here and this was just the way i, I did it first okay let's take a look at maps here so the only map where defenders went or yeah where defenders went positive and that is where attackers went negative on entry was on clubhouse which is pretty curious because there are several pretty defender sided maps at the moment i mean you'd say villa oregon uh club and and cafe are defender sided 
and then Chalet, Coastline, and I think at this point we can say Bank is attacker sided, especially looking at uh, this stat. But just because the opening kills go heavily in favor of attackers does not make it a defender sided map. Like looking at Oregon here, that's a you know like a two point three ratio. Seventy percent of the time in stage three of the NAL, uh, attackers won the opening duel on Oregon, but. Uh, they didn't win 70% of rounds or anywhere near that. Just because you get the opening kill doesn't mean you're going to win the round. It increases your chances, but especially if you get the kill late into the round, it's not going to... I mean, it's, it's not going to like guarantee your win or anything. If you're, if you're consistently getting the opening kill, but there's only one minute left on the clock, that's just not enough time to execute onto a bunch of sites, especially sites like Basement, Oregon, and whatnot. But again, very interesting that Clubhouse is the only one. And you can maybe draw some conclusions about... If maps are, uh, you know, roam heavy, like if they're favorable for roamers to play around and maybe do roam setups or just uh, like extensions or maybe they're just execute heavy site uh, maps and clubhouses sort of execute heavy, right? Uh, like you can open the wall very quickly when you're attacking CCTV and cache, but uh, you still have to do other things to get to get safely onto the site for a plant, like you have to clear out garage. And then even, even from there, you might have to bait out some smokes and C4s and stuff. And if you're attacking basement, just because you open the hatches doesn't mean you can just drop and push into site without getting killed, so on and so forth. And that's, and that's not necessarily what's uh, going on here, but maybe you could draw such conclusions if you, if you would like. Um, yeah, even like Chalet is less less attacker sided when it comes to opening duels than Oregon, which carries 70% for Oregon, and this is like um, 60 to, uh, what would that be, 5 out of 8? Yeah, like 63% for, for attackers. So, right, that's, that's maps, and of course, this is where the differential came into play. Total, it's just, it's, it's for the entire, um, the entire stage anyways, but I just have it in the maps category just because it was a nice place to put it. Then let's look at the top 8 players. So, these are generally the primary entries. So Hot and Cold, DP Fire, Vertical, Grixer are a lot of the primary entries for their teams. And then the other ones are like secondary entries mostly, like Grixen, Hyper Achieved, etc. Or or and actually we'll we'll uh, we'll look into something for Dark Zero in a little bit. Uh yeah, so like I talked about before, Hot and Cold, very good. But I think surprisingly for a lot of people, DP Fire is way up here. I I don't know off the top of his head top of his head what is total opening kills opening deaths was like but i don't think it was very good i think it's like close to even so he must have gone if that's true maybe i'm maybe i'm misrepresenting that um if but it, if if it's at all true like that then he went massively negative on defense which is unfortunate and i think this speaks a lot to the fact that astralis are very good at some things and they were just very bad at other things because as we'll look at in a minute they were they were the best team at getting that opening kill it doesn't mean they're the best at doing it quickly or converting a, a round win from it, but they were very good at getting that opening kill. DP Fire getting the most opening kills here, 14 to, uh, you know, Hot and Cold and Vertical 13. He went plus 10, the second best after just Hot and Cold. And yeah, just really good. But I mean, it only got them what, seventh place in the stage. So it's, uh, it's not fantastic, but that, that goes to show that they don't have everything to work on. They just have some things to work on. And then, I mean, down the line, this is just, I, I cut it off at uh, 8 instead of 10 because once, every, everything below this, uh, the next increment, of course, is 3, and there's like a bunch of players at, at plus 3, so I didn't want to do the top 15 or something. And then bottom 8, uh, let's look at it. So, Merc is definitely the outlier here. He is the team's primary entry, and he did pretty badly. I think his stats are decent overall in terms of opening kills, opening deaths, but for attack, yeah, he went minus 5 with a 50, you know, 50% uh, I, no, and he only won one third, but a 0.5 ratio. So uh, pretty poor. Like Merck's a very good player, but for one reason or another, I don't know if it's based on his individual play or if it's based on the way his team has supported him or failed to support him. That resulted in him um, doing pretty poorly. But the rest of them make sense. I mean, Super and Jay are both support IGLs, so it makes sense that their stats aren't great. Maybe four opening kills is a bit, or opening deaths rather, is a bit much, but keep in mind, this is over the course of eight games, so it's going to happen sometimes. Like, a roamer's going to get crazy and maybe take you out. Uh, you can't always avoid it. Thomas is maybe the, is one of the other outliers. Not a support player, but pretty bad stats. But then, like, Skies and Dream, support players. Kino, generally a support player, but I think on attack this stage, he played a lot more 
maybe not entry, but he wasn't the primary entry because that was pretty much always vertical. But he did get a lot of opening deaths, especially in like one clubhouse game against Space Station, maybe. But he was playing a lot more aggressively and playing a lot less support on attack. So despite being historically a support player, um, maybe take that into account. And then Thomas and Bolo, pretty bad as well. I mean, um, Thomas might have been on like secondary entry. I'm not sure if it's like him or Benji or what the deal. Let, let me look up here really quick. Um, what What is it actually? Ben, Benji only went three. Yeah. So, Tom, I mean, Thomas was involved in way more. Nix clearly is the primary entry, but then... Uh, load yeah every everyone had more than benji and that's super weird he was the entry player before an entry player okay and then yeah so thomas i guess secondary entry he played a lot of uh, yana and whatnot pretty poor and then bolo as well uh tsm was really bad on entry especially compared to where they placed they were like the second worst team on entry and they were ended up in fifth place for the stage so uh interesting to note that and then these are just what i guests are the primary entries and this is just based on who got the who was involved in the most entry duels for their team it was it was all a clear front runner except for on sonics i think grixer and yeti both had 12 right let's look at it grixer was nine and three and yeti six and six though and a lot of these for yeti came in like one game he, he went one in one in five so and some of these even got like spawn killed and stuff. he was playing maverick so he wasn't really I, so i think it makes grixer clearly the clearly the the main entry and I think that was clear, regardless of that game or not. Um, right, and then you can see their opening kills, opening deaths, the differential, and then their involvement percentage. So if you do want to draw any conclusions from there, again, Mark, clearly the worst. Everyone went at least even as for the primary entries. NBK, the second worst, 7-7. Seven and seven. Not that bad, but NBK had a pretty rough stage, though, um, despite what this stat may suggest. I guess the least involved were... NJR and Grixer, so that is to say that the involvement was spread out more amongst the rest of their teammates, and perhaps that's a flaw in them, or perhaps that just uh, the rest of their team being aggressive in addition to them, just the structure of the team, so not necessarily their fault or a flaw or whatever, but just interesting to know. And then looking over here, like I mentioned before, Astralis, the best team on on entry, they, they didn't get the most. I mean, Space Station got one more than them, but Astralis got two fewer deaths, so they got... Uh, differential greater by one and then you can see a little bit of a, a tier system here like these two are really close to each other and then these four are really close and then um you know, then you have the ones that are not positive even and negative and i don't know i mean let me know does this surprise you that like be eh, i mean it makes sense beast codes were pretty bad but then x set uh, surprised a little bit they're just as positive on differ differential as auction and sonic and i just ranked them this order because i mean that's just how they're placed but also Beast Coast took a lot of opening dual losses to Beast Coast, so that put him down, but that I still attribute that to it being their very first game of the stage. If that had been later, I think that game might have gone differently. And I guess at this point, I will just go down the line looking at this. Uh, only 12 players went negative, 5 players went even, and 28 players went positive, and that speaks to generally attackers being better when it comes to the entry duels because... Their purpose is to get the entry duels, and they have tools to do so, uh, not least of which the drones. And then also that the fact that so many uh, people went positive and so few people didn't go positive in comparison to the fact that teams at this level of play are just very good and will manage to keep their entry players as the ones involved in the entry duels a lot of the time. Okay. No player on X set went negative, so that's good. I think that they were the only team that can boast that except for dark zero who everyone on that team went positive so that's that's quite cool and actually i said i was gonna look at dark zero so let's look at it really quick um yeah everyone went positive and i guess two of them only by one two of them by two and they were very spread in terms of involvement i have a little bullet point down there that's going to talk about it but they yeah i mean even even eclipse was involved in five opening duels and i guess he, the stage he wasn't much of a an entry player he made a shift this stage, I think, in terms of his role. He was, for the last few games, on Hard Breach, and I, I don't actually recall what he was doing before that. Maybe he was on Hard Breach longer than I thought, but uh, anyways. Um, and it was actually NJR, who had been playing a support role in the past, who now has the most opening duels this stage. I would have thought it would have been Pambazoo, but on attack, NJR actually took the most. But as you can see here, no more than two in any one map. Pambazoo has three here, three here, um, but... And JR, usually at least one, 
in every map at least one except for this one and then no more than two so i just thought that was interest interesting to note how they were pretty successful as a team and it was very spread out so continuing down the line astralis had the highest differential and the best ratio for opening kills and opening deaths only TSM and Beast Coast went negative, and only Mirage went even, which we covered in the, the teams over here. DP Fire had the highest involvement at 43.9%, and Chala had the lowest involvement at 2.3%. I think the next lowest was Shuttle at like 2.4%, so that was, they were each involved in one round, but uh, Astralis, I guess, played one more attack round. And it makes sense. Chala, especially at stage, was just playing... He was playing Breach in the past. He played Fankwatch, but now he's been playing Breach, so it makes sense that your Breach player is involved in the fewest number of opening duels on attack. Astralis had the highest, had the widest involvement range from 2.4 to 44 percent, and then Dark Zero had the narrowest, which we looked at. DP Fire had the most opening kills on attack, and then Merc, poor Merc, Merc had the most opening deaths on attack. Was the only one to break double-digit opening deaths, and was the only primary entry to go negative. So pretty brutal stage for him in terms of entry. Clubhouse was the only map on which the attacks went negative. Space Station Gaming only went negative against Xset. Um, I won't read all of these, actually, but you can you can just take a look at all of these. It just denotes who went negative against whom, and I will mention TSM went negative against four teams, and Beast Coast also went negative against four teams, so that makes sense. They were the two worst on entry, as we saw here. The only two teams to go negative, and Astralis didn't go negative against any team and was the only team to do so, so again... Another point in the camp of Astralis for their, them being the best entry team for Stage 3. And then I, I talked about this, I talked about that, and then Dream had the worst non-zero ratio. So some team, you know, some players had like 0-4, but I, I was surprised that nobody went like 1-4, 1-5, any of that stuff. But Dream just managed to get the one kill, so that uh, put him at highest non-zero. And okay, so there's like a million things I could talk about. This video is already pretty long, though, and a bunch of analysis I could kind of sort of probably do but a lot of it might be grasping at straws because just looking at the numbers doesn't always tell the story especially for such a narrow category when i don't have the stats here for conversions or time left in round and stuff like this it's hard to really paint a full pic full picture or in it in at all mm. and at all accurate picture okay so but this is just interesting to look at i think especially because again like i mentioned before People n neglect to look at just uh, entry stats on attack when they'll also look at defense, which isn't nearly as important for this sort of thing. And I, I guess that's going to do it. Like if you want to, I mean, you can go back and pause when I mentioned to pause and you can look at the individual stats. Hopefully I don't have any glaring issues in here. I tried to look back over it and I just thought this was pretty, this was pretty interesting. So... Yeah, I guess with all of that being said, I will catch you in the next video.